every time a Windows end of life is either announced or actually happens, people always sort of scurry out of the woodworks to explain that this is Linux's time in the sun. This time, this is going to be the year of the Linux desktop. It happened with Windows 10, and it's happening again with Windows 11. So this Reddit post got about 1,400 upvotes, and then promptly got deleted by the moderators saying, 2025 equals year of the Linux desktop. None of my computers support Windows 11. How are we preparing for the 2025 tsunami of new Linux users? So Microsoft is ending support for Windows 10 on October 14th, 2025. It will mark just over 10 years since the operating system was first introduced. Wait, Windows 10 has been out for 10 years? Okay, Microsoft revealed the retirement date for Windows 10 and updated the lifecycle page for the OS. Keep in mind the switch to Windows 10 was very different from the switch to Windows 11. So every new Windows release is going to raise up the minimum hardware requirements. But the Windows 10 requirements are entirely reasonable and you probably don't want to be using Windows 10 if you don't meet these anyway. So right now for the latest version, you need a 1 GHz CPU. 1 gigabyte of RAM for 32-bit, 2 gigabyte for 64-bit, 16 gigs of hard drive space for 32-bit, 20 gig for 64-bit, a GPU that supports DirectX 9 or later with minimum WDDM 1.0 driver, and a display that is 800 by 600. If you don't meet these, I don't know why you're using Windows. But then for Windows 11, most of it was still pretty reasonable. A 720p screen, 4 gigabytes of RAM, still a 1 gigahertz CPU, but this time you need two cores. But the controversial part was the requirement for TPM version 2.0. Now all of the new CPU platforms support TPM 2.0, but there are laptops that are only about three years old that release for the CPU that don't. And a three-year-old laptop might not be the best thing for doing like AAA modern gaming, trying to play like Elden Ring or something on Mac settings. But when it comes to being a university system or just doing, you know, general computing, a three-year-old laptop is more than most people are ever going to need. So the first question I have to ask then is, does this guy not plan to upgrade any of his systems. Now, I'm not asking ThinkPad people, you guys are kind of weird and are going to run like ancient hardware just because that's the thing you do. But right now, the newest platform that doesn't support TPM 2.0 is AMD CPUs from 2018. So by 2025, that platform will be seven years old. And that's totally fine if you want to keep running a system that's that old. That's your system, do whatever you want. But most other people out there have either upgraded into the supported range already, or by 2025 are going to buy a new system that is somewhere in that range. But more importantly, end of life does not mean that people have to stop using the operating system. All it means is Microsoft or whoever is making the operating system is no longer going to support it. And if I've learned anything from my time of being like, you know, the family techie, it's that people don't even know what an end of life is. I know people who, when Windows 7 was current, were still running XP. And I know people right now who are still using Windows 7. That went EOL two years ago. You should not be using Windows 7 in an internet connected context. It is a terrible idea. But regular people don't really care about that. All that really matters is the computer is still working. So everything is fine then. Now I've said this plenty of times in the past, but it sort of bears repeating here. If you live in the tech bubble, whether that's the Linux bubble, the general consumer tech bubble, open source development, or even just gaming, it can seem like everybody understands how a computer works and how to generally keep your system safe, what security patches are, what vulnerabilities are, and things like that. But when it comes to the normal person, who just thinks of their computer like a tool, like you would think of, say, a hammer. You don't really think about who made the hammer, like what the hammer is particularly good for. You just use the hammer. There are people that think like that about computers, and that is most people out there. And people like that don't even know what an operating system is. But far more importantly, normal people 
generally don't install operating systems. Now, there are very clear exceptions, those being macOS, Android, and iOS. The reason why there are exceptions is because they generally don't treat OS upgrades like they are a big deal. So when you go from like, I don't, know, I don't know what the current version of Android is. Let's just say Android 10. So if you go from Android 10 to Android 11, sure, it's going to take longer to do the upgrade. But the way you do the upgrade is it just comes in like a regular system update. So you do the system update, it just all happens magically, and it's not a big deal. And the exact same is true on the Apple platforms as well. Now, Windows has absolutely improved upon this over the past couple of releases. Going back to something like Vista, for example, if you wanted to go from Vista up to 7, you couldn't just go and click a button and then it would magically go up to 7. You had to go and get the ISO for it or get a installation CD and then go through the process of migrating everything over, which wasn't a big deal. But nowadays, especially as of Windows Eight, I want to say, now it will nag you saying, hey, there's a new version of Windows. Go and install the new version. And I wouldn't be surprised if maybe in like one or two more releases, it does get to that point where it's as seamless as some of those other platforms. That is, unless they decide to break their naming again and make it seem like a big deal. I like these numbered releases. I like it when the numbers go up sequentially. It makes sense. It's a good system. But with those people still running Windows 7, in a kind of backwards, it shouldn't be the case kind of way, this is actually a better state to be in. Because now, running this end of life operating system, you're no longer getting annoying updates. Even though it's completely insecure, you're not getting updates disrupting your work. End of life is actually a better state. So all of this put together is generally why people only upgrade their operating system when they buy a new computer. And it's almost certain that that new computer is going to be a Windows system. Maybe they'll try a Mac, but they're not going to go and buy a Linux system. Not because they wouldn't be happy to try Linux, but generally they can't buy a system because while Linux pre-builds and Linux laptops do exist, outside of very specific Linux brands, it's never the main focus, so it's easy to never even know that those systems exist. As for the corporate side, much the same holds true. Most people there have no idea about computers. Now, obviously, Different businesses are going to be different. If you're talking about a development house or like some company that's in like Web3 or something like that, sure, most people there are probably, you know, techies. But if it's like an accounting firm, you know, they're going to know what they need to know. With the extra addition being that you can't just leave Windows because while certain workflows can be built around or converted into Linux workflows, whether that be software development or server management or data science or statistics and things like that, in the end, most businesses need Windows exclusive tooling because everybody else is using Windows exclusive tooling. Obviously, things like the Microsoft Office and Adobe Suites are main examples there, but a lot of companies, especially ones that have been around for a while, have these internal intranets that were built around Internet Explorer and will not function on anything else because that was a terrible browser and things need to be built with it specifically in mind. Or maybe they're using some ancient DOS software they had written like 30 plus years ago and it just works, so they're not going to change it. Plus, there's the fact that you either have to retrain people or hire a bunch of new employees, both of which are very expensive things to do for arguably very little gain to productivity or maybe even a productivity downturn. Plus, there's the obvious fact that if a business right now is not using hardware supported by Windows 11, by 2025, they probably will be, because most businesses operate on a hardware replacement cycle every two, three, four or so years, and by the time that rolls around, they will have already migrated over, or will be very close to doing that replacement and getting hardware that just ships with Windows 11. As for companies that have a bring your own device policy or entirely remote work where all you're doing is working from your personal hardware, 
if your employer says you need a Windows 11 supported computer to be working this job, well, you're going to buy a computer that supports Windows 11 or you're going to find another job. Now, I'm not saying that because of Windows 11, nobody is going to migrate to Linux. Because I'm certain there's a couple of these people in my comment section right now. And if they're not, I'll be very, very surprised. And if not for Windows 11, maybe for the end of life of Windows 10 or Windows 8.1 or 8 or 7 or anything else like that. I guarantee that there are people who did migrate to Linux because they didn't like the next version of Windows. But... The people who were considering to do that, or have already done so, were likely already a technically minded person in the first place. And if they didn't migrate then, they were probably going to migrate at some point in the future. And honestly, that is awesome. Congrats for using Linux, I hope you like your stay. But I don't see this being the start of a bigger wave. Like it wasn't the start of a big wave for Windows 10, wasn't the start of a big wave for Windows 8.1 or 8 or 7 or anything else going back in the past and probably anything going into the future. There will be a couple of people who trickle over, but it's probably only going to be those. But for the people who are generally just using Linux, the state of Linux is continuing to improve. But the main problem with getting people to migrate over is getting that foot in the door. And I don't see Windows 11 being that wedge. But if I'm wrong in 2025 and we see this massive uptick in Linux users, you know what? I'll donate a couple thousand dollars to the FSF. I just don't see it happening. But maybe you think I'm wrong, and if you do, let me know in the comments section down below. Besides that, if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video, and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to the Bear Pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Bro Ups and Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.